to I might start that introduction again, actually. Good morning and welcome to our first live stream for 2021. We'll be hosting these live streams throughout the year and they'll be freely available for all businesses to uh, watch the recording. They're posted on our Facebook, on our YouTube and on our website as well. So, you know, if you find this information useful, uh, then please feel free to share that. Um, the, these live streams are all about... Um, keeping people up to date with our ever-changing world. So today I'm joined by Louise Talbot and Rachel Horwood from Wellworks Pharmacy Bullcott. Wellworks Pharmacy Bullcott has recently become a chamber member and we're delighted to have you as part of our organisation. Thank you for joining us today, Rachel and Louise. Vaccines are very much a top of mind right now and so we thought to kick off the year a live stream about vaccines. While most of the talk is about COVID-19 vaccines, there's also a flu vaccine, and it's really important to not lose sight of that. One of the things we've all learned during the past year is how important workplace health and safety is, and we all need to remain as healthy as we can so that we uh, minimise the disruption and keep um, us all safe as we go through this year. So the 2021 Influenza Immunisation Programme starts actually in April, so it starts tomorrow. And as we now know more than ever, we even the threat of flu is enough to um, help to make businesses grind to a little bit of a halt. The flu vaccine is the most cost-effective way for employers to protect their staff, reduce the chance of illnesses spreading, and the associated risk of productivity loss. It's also important to know, and there's not been much in the media about this currently, but we need to think about how the flu vaccine fits in with the COVID-19 immunisation programme that is due to start rolling out to the general public later in the year. And I know, having spoken to Louise previously, that there has to be some time lag between the two vaccines. So important to get the flu vaccine done if you're going to do that, um, get it done early rather than later. So both Louise and Rachel have completed the COVID-19 Pfizer vaccine training and have actually even had the vaccine, I think, and will be part of the team rolling this program out across the Hutt Valley later in the year. And so today they are going to discuss the importance of the, vac the influenza vaccine, how it works, how long it takes to provide protection and how it fits with the COVID-19 vaccine rollout as well. Before I hand over to Rachel and Louise, please remember to ask any questions you may have in the comments field in this video, and Rachel and Louise, and I will answer them at the end of the live stream. So it's my pleasure to welcome Rachel and Louise from Wellworks Pharmacy, Bullcott. Great. So thanks, Alan. Thanks for the introduction. And we're both really excited to be here today. Um, to be talking to everyone about workplace immunisations. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background um, about our experience, just to start off with. So I worked for one of the world's largest uh, vaccine manufacturers for nearly 10 years. So vaccines have become a huge passion of mine. Uh, Rachel and I opened Wellworks Pharmacy Bullcott with a few other partners in January last year. And since then, vaccinations have become a large part of our business. Yes, hi. Um, we've got six accredited vaccinators at Wellworks Pharmacy, myself included, <clears throat> and I've been vaccinating for the last five years. Um, we've all done the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 um, vaccination course, and at the moment we're currently vaccinating the DHB staff at Hutt Hospital, so we've got 3,000 people coming through at the moment, so we're doing lots of those vaccinations, which is very exciting to be part of. Yeah, it's been keeping us quite, us quite busy, hasn't it? Yes. Um, so we thought we'd kick off today's session um, on workplace immunisations by talking about the most common uh, vaccine, which is the influenza vaccine. Um, and as Helen mentioned, this is actually really timely because the National Influenza Vaccination Programme kicks off in a few weeks' time, sort of in the middle of April. Um, so I really do think now more than ever, it is really important for employers to be considering uh, offering the influenza vaccine for employees, given the current COVID-19 situation that we sort of all find ourselves living in. Um, so I think we've probably all heard those Ministry of Health announcements, whether it's on the TV, the radio, um, you know, they're telling everyone to stay at home if you're feeling unwell. And I mean, that is a really important public health message to try and stop that spread of COVID-19 in the community. 
Uh, but we all know from a business perspective, it's actually really expensive uh, to have employees off work um, for a lot of the time. So you may or may not be aware, but actually flu is one of the major contributors to days off work due to illness over those winter months. So there was a study that looked at a workplace where none of the employees were vaccinated. And what they found was that that nearly 40% of days off work due to illness were due to the flu at that time of year when flu is circulating in your community. So it really is, the flu vaccination really is a cost-effective option. It not only protects your employees, it stops it spreading within the workplace and therefore reducing those associated productivity losses uh, within your business. Exactly. Um, now, Louise was talking about it being cost effective, so you're probably wondering um, how much it does cost. Normally, um, somebody walking in off the street to get vaccinated, it's $35 um, for the flu vaccine. Um, but we've got a special for the Hutt Valley um, Chamber of Commerce, and it's $29.50 per vaccine. Um, and you probably won't have to pay for all of your employees because um, there are some groups that are fully funded, like the over 65s, um, people with diabetes, asthma, um, heart disease, pregnant, and we can organise the funding for that. Um, the process is also very quick. Um, you'd be amazed at how quickly we can get through your employees. Um, normally, it, it's roughly about three to five minutes um, per um, between people and you send through email through the consent forms we email them through to you first so people can fill them out beforehand just to um, speed that whole process up um, we generally come out to businesses when there's 10 or more staff um, if there's less you can email us your staff um, names or, or if that's more convenient email up your staff names and we can vaccinate them at, at their leisure Yes, yeah, so it's all quite easy, isn't it? So we sort of, um, so that sort of covers the influenza um, program. We can answer any other questions that you have um, surrounding that. But we then thought we'd sort of move on to how it fits in with COVID-19 vaccine rollout in New Zealand. Um, so as Helen touched on, there does need to be a bit of time between the two vaccines. So at the moment, um, they're saying there needs to be a minimum of two weeks between when the influenza vaccine's given um, and then the COVID-19 vaccine has been given. Um, so the government are currently estimating that the rollout um, to the general population um, for the COVID-19 vaccine will be in July. Uh, we're able to come out to your business and vaccinate against influenza from the 28th of April. Um, so it's really important if you are considering giving, you know, offering the influenza vaccination to your employees, that you do it sooner rather than later. Firstly, just so that they're protected earlier in the season, so then you're sort of getting more bang for your buck if you are going to do it. But secondly, then it means that it won't sort of have any impact on the COVID-19 vaccine rollout later in the year. So you're probably wondering um, when or will we be able to get the COVID-19 vaccine um, given at your workplace. Um, so far, the Ministry of Health hasn't communicated exactly how the rollout rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine will happen with the general public, but they have said that they may be able to get it at or near their workplaces or possibly even um, through pharmacies. Um, we can assure you that as soon as we know, um, we will let you know if, if we can come out to your workplaces. Um, and yeah, we've, we've had a lot of experience doing it, so we, we know what we're doing. Yeah, if we can, we'll be there, won't we? Coming we out will. to workplaces, yeah. We'll let you know. Um, so, and just to cover, I think Helen touched on it, we have had it ourselves. So last mm -hmm. Friday, I got it. And I think, did you get it last Friday? Last Sunday. Last Sunday. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, we had a bit of a sore arm, but other than, other than that, Nothing it was else. all good. It's a tiny needle. It's a small amount of vaccine. Mm -hmm. So, um, And then three weeks later, you get your, your next dose. Next dose. We're on our pathway to being protected, which is quite exciting. Um, so just in summary, so the influenza program starts in a few weeks' time. Um, it's a cost-effective way to protect your employers, um, employees. It's easy to implement, as Rach covered. Um, and Wellworks Pharmacy does have a special at the moment for the Hutt Valley Chamber of Commerce uh, members, which is $27.50 per employee. 
And because it needs to be that two week um, gap between the influenza vaccine and the COVID-19 vaccine, the sooner the better to influence your staff against um, influenza. So that means they're um, protected from the beginning of the season. And the rollout um, of the COVID-19 vaccine, it's been rumoured to um, be from about July um, and maybe at your workplaces. And if so, we'll be in touch as soon as we know more. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Great. Thank you for that, uh, you know, very concise and useful uh overview of how the vaccines work because I know that it's not top of mind just yet for many business owners but it's going to be as soon as uh, flu season kicks in or as soon as people start you know being away from work and and even the uncertainty of knowing what they've got is, is stressful enough for businesses you know they've got to go get COVID tests and that sort of thing as well so in terms of um, the COVID vaccine I've, I've got a question around um, who gets it for free so the whole of New Zealand will get the COVID-19 vaccine for free over the age of 16. So anyone under the age of 16 in New Zealand um, won't be vaccinated, but everyone over the age of 16 will get the COVID-19 vaccine for free once it's rolled out. Right. And so if a under 16-year-old wants to get it, can they get it or they're not allowed to get it? No, there's um, they haven't got all the safety data through yet to do the under 16s. So at this stage none of them are in New Zealand. Right. Okay. And in terms of employer-employee relationships, can can an employer require someone to have a, a vaccine? Either the No, or... they can't. And in fact, um, the Ministry of Health has specifically said that, you know, the COVID-19 vaccine is not going to be mandatory for people. Right. Um, um, but I think they're very hopeful that, you know, the majority of New Zealand will sign up and, and take part um, in yeah. being vaccinated and helping to protect, you know, the population so that we can sort of move on and open up the borders, etc. And we're happy to talk to people about any concerns that they do have, if that's the barrier. Yeah, so I, I think that some people uh, may have not considered vaccines before so much in terms of as a workplace or an employer from a workplace or employer perspective but COVID opens up that whole discussion doesn't it really? It really does. It does yeah and we're, we're sort of confident to come and you know if people wanted to come you know if they have a lot of employees you know we're happy to come and talk to them you know when we're vaccinating them. I think we're very good at sort of making people feel relaxed and communicating about the benefits of the vaccination, you know, explaining the common side effects that you might expect to experience once you've had it. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's something we're used to dealing with and, and we can definitely help, you know, talk to employers about that and sending information that they can share with their employees, et cetera. Yeah, I think um, some information that they can share with the employees would actually be quite useful. Maybe we can get some of that up on on our website and link through to, to you guys for, for that. That would, I think, be quite a good service for business community really definitely definitely and it was interesting at the beginning um how you talked about how COVID-19 and influenza you know they can pr present quite similarly so both sort of mm -hmm. respiratory illnesses mm -hmm. and you know another question we've been asked is um in fact yeah was you know does one vaccine prevent against the other type thing but I I mean yes so does one vaccine cover both but I think it's important for people to realise that it's, it's really important that they still have both of those vaccines this year to ensure they're both protected against influenza and also COVID-19. Yeah, absolutely. Rather than just taking one or the other. Um, yeah. 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 Maybe the first time I think many people will have considered it, obviously. So, you know, it, to, to think, oh, I'll get the flu vaccine and that will give me more protection. You know, it's, it's important for them to realise that, uh, you know, they need both of them. So... Um, if, if you're going to have, an, have them. So, uh, yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, I don't think there are any other questions, but um, I think that as a, for this live stream, it's good to be able to start this conversation because it's a conversation that's going to dominate the, um, well, dominate communications really for, for months, isn't it? And probably even more than that. So it's great to be able to uh, start this conversation, help people to be thinking about the vaccine, vaccine program for flu and for COVID and how the two fit together. Um, it's great that you two have had it and I didn't realise you were rolling it out into the hospital. So 
Um, have you been down at uh, the, where is the immunisation centres likely to be, do you know? So it's um, so actually at the moment we're doing it in partnership with um, Royal Pata Health, who are the medical centre that are next door to us, and because we back onto the heart hospital as well, um, that's why all the heart hospital DHB are coming and getting vaccinated at that medical centre. Um, in terms of how it's being rolled out to the general population and where they'll need to go, they haven't exactly specified that yet, but the Walsh and Ash Stadium up in Taita, that has been a vaccination centre that's where some of our employees went as well mm -hmm. um, to be vaccinated against COVID nineteen. So it right. may may still be that, but yeah, we we yet to yet to know. Yet to find out. Yeah, and you're a new pharmacy, aren't you? It well works. Yeah. We are. We just opened last um, January. Yeah. So oh. um, so yeah, it's brand new premises. We're part of the health hub. Um, Right. And Walcott, so it's um, sort of it's a purpose-built building. We've got the dialysis unit, uh, rope out of health, a dentist, physio. Specialists. Cafes. <laughs> yeah. Cafes. <laughs> so it's a, busy right. little, it's a busy little hub. But, um, yeah, it's exciting. We've sort of, we've got all of, you know, we've got a lot of technology. We've got three robots in, the, in our dispensary. Um, so no longer counting pills. It does yeah. it all for us. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're excited. We're excited. It's got yeah, it's a great space to be working in. Yeah, great. And and thank you very much for um, you know, joining the chamber as soon as you started as well. So, you know, we appreciate your support. And we um we'll come back to you later in the year as well. You know, as soon as there's some updates and stuff, maybe we can provide another live stream um and some more information out to uh, the business community so that we keep everyone out to up to date. So thanks so much for your time. Is there anything you want to add before I close off? No, that's, no, I think that's everything. One thing I would ask, do you want to pop your uh, contact details uh, up in the comment stream so that if people have questions when they're watching this as a recording, they can get directly in contact with you. Um, and uh, and if they want to talk about workplace vaccinations, then they'll know where to go. So if you could pop that in the comment stream, that would be great. And uh, so thank you for sharing your expertise this, this morning. Um, I'm sure our listeners will take away uh, a few valuable things from this live stream and start thinking about the flu vaccine if they're not already. Um, you know, it just takes a few wet days like we've had for people to start thinking about winter. So, um, you know, it, it's good timing. And if someone wants to get in touch with you, then we'll have those uh, contact details up as well. And so before I sign off, can I just let everyone know what's coming up with the Hutt Valley businesses from the Chamber in the next couple of weeks? So next week, actually, we have another health-themed um, event. It's called the I Can't Wait campaign, which we're doing and we're launching that in Upper Hutt with Crohn's and Colitis New Zealand. And that's about helping uh, local businesses provide toilet facilities for those people who suffer from Crohn's and colitis, which is um, a very prevalent disease and really um, difficult for the people who have that. So that's on the 6th of April, and I think we've got one seat left on that event. So if someone wants to join us for that event in Upper Hutt, then pop onto our website and you can book that last seat. Plus, we have lunch with Brad Olson next week, who is the senior economist from Infometrics, who many will have seen um, well, online and on the television and all over COVID and, and all media communication. So he's sharing his outlook for the economy in 2021. Um, and he'll be looking at what's happening locally and, and nationally and globally. So he's also sure to talk about the changes in legislation around housing and property. So you can book on our website. There's a few seats left on that one. I have to confirm numbers probably today. So if you want to get on that, it's going to be an excellent lunch and um and very useful if you're planning your year. And on the 9th of April, as in at the inaugural Small Business Day, the Hutt Valley Chamber will be launching our Small Business Support Program with a live stream on the 9th of April. So take a look at our Facebook as we load up some details about that as well. And um, if you want to contact the Chamber at all, then our phone number is 04-939-9821, or you can email us at info at hvchamber.co.nz, or take a look at our website. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for uh, for sharing your expertise from WellWorks Pharmacy Bullcott and um, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Okay. Thank Great. You. Thanks very much for having us. Cheers. Bye. Bye.